Hi, I'm Katie, and this is the 28th episode of Ornamentations, which will feature the latest floss tube kit, Seasons of the Heart Fall, which I think turned out beautifully. I cannot get enough of these colors. I absolutely love them. I have a new finish to share with you, some really exciting new linen colors. I love new linen. And a little bit of haul to go with that as well. And a really exciting new start. I might be the only person who's excited about this, but I'm really excited. And then I also have some new giveaways as well as the giveaway winner from the previous episode of the Floss Tube Anniversary Fob. And I will also be previewing my stitch for Sampler September, which is right around the corner corner and I am ready to get started. So I hope you're settled in, you got some stitching, maybe a cup of tea, and you're ready for lots of stitchy chat because this is a jam-packed episode and I have a lot to share with you today. But before I do, I just wanted to thank you all for your beautiful and heartfelt comments on the last episode. And my mom asked me to thank you directly from her as well. We both read them. She actually usually does read the comments on my boss tubes because she likes reading all the lovely things you guys say. This really is such a wonderful and supportive community, but we were both really touched by all the beautiful comments on the last episode. It was an absolute pleasure to share my mom with you. Um, like I said, I love her and we had a lot of fun filming that, so she'll be back, but more on that later. So let's start today with the fall kit launch. So the kit for Seasons of the Heart Fall is now available on my website and I'll link that. In the description below, there are a very limited number of beading kits available. I was able to get more than the last time, but I think it's probably still not going to be enough to meet demand, and I am sorry about that. So what does your kit include? It includes the linen, 38 count Fuller's Teasel, the backing silk satin that I use on my pillow finish, which is just, oh, it's a perfect match for the Fuller's Teasel. I love it and I have heard from many of you about how much you're enjoying the silk satin as a backing as well, which is just love it because I can't get enough of it so I'm always glad when you guys appreciate the things I love too. And then a silk conversion comprised of 12 threads, more 103 than Goblin's this time because that was really where the right colors were. If you are confused about the difference between Swa 103 and Swa Goblin's, make sure to check out my specialty thread tutorial part one where I explain the different uses and characteristics of all of these threads, including the needles that you should stitch them with. If you're having trouble with your silks, the first thing to do is always look at your needle. You may be using the wrong one for either your count or your particular thread. So these are the colors and oh, these are beautiful. So this is 12 down from the 19 called for in the chart, but I think that this makes for a really complete palette and I absolutely love this selection. I think it's really, really versatile and that you could use it for any number of false stitches. So in addition to having slightly compressed the palette, I did change the tone of the oranges. So they're more, the oranges on the model stitch are cooler and more blue toned. That's not really my personal preference in orange. So I went for very warm yellow toned oranges. And I think that just, that says fall to me and it goes with the other colors beautifully. So this is a little tonally different, but otherwise I think very true to the model stitch. And then as you can see, I've also used a slightly more richly colored ground linen here, which again, I think really plays with the fall colors and then it's just perfect with the crystal accent. So the color is crystal golden shadow and I have included retail sources as part of your kit materials if you would like to do this but you weren't able to get a beading kit. The beads are readily available at retail. I just as an individual can't get as many as I would like. So the kit does not however include the chart. Um, just so Apparently with some confusion about that last time, it is a full kit, everything except the car chart. So linen, 
backing silk and then all of the silk threads and then if you get a beading kit as well that includes all of the crystal rounds to make the crystal beaded loop dudging following my tutorial and then the nylon beading thread and the number 12 beading needle to stitch it with so kit now available and just given where we are on the calendar with everybody just back from summer school school starting people being busy pre-orders will be open for two weeks instead of the usual one just this once and um, after that the conversion will be permanently retired and no it will not be shared afterwards so your only chance here is through the floss tube kit so Oh, about the conversion. So I have heard from a lot of you that the floss tube kits are helpful in building up a silk stash, which I love to hear, I love to serve, and I am all for silk stashes. But with that in mind, I have been keeping an eye on repeats. So there are a few here, but with the idea of helping you build a really complete and versatile silk stash, where there are color repeats, I have given them to you in 103 instead of Goblin's for maximum versatility and range in your stash. So um, that's one point. And then also um, versatility on the chart, on the colors. So one thing I've noticed with fall seasonal stitches is that they tend to have Kind of repeating palettes and i think you could use this basically as a sorry for all the crinkling with the plastic i know that bothers people um with a number of other fall charts so two that i was thinking of were brenda gervais bittersweet and broomsticks and then also grateful thankful blessed so carol saltbox stitcher showed this completed on her recent episode and I really hate block stitching so I'm not looking to stitch the whole thing but I love the pumpkin in the basket and the birds at the top so they're like graceful leaves little berries so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stitch this little bit as a tiny pillow on Irish coffee of course to complement some of my other fall stitches so I'm going to be making some changes to the palette especially on bittersweet and broomsticks so that it pops a little more against the richer ground I have in mind, Irish coffee. And also with some sparkle, I've picked out some accentuate to work my pumpkins in because I want to use the crazy beaded trim for bittersweet and broomsticks. So I'll be making some changes basically because I can and because I want to suit the sparkles but you could use this pretty much I think as is for most fall stitches if Seasons of the Heart fall doesn't really speak to you. Also with the exception of Grateful Thankful Best these are pretty small charts and these are 50 meter spools of thread so this will get you through multiple fall stitches. You don't have to go out and buy the same colors twice. But that is Seasons of the Heart Fall, which whether you're interested in the kit or not, I really hope you enjoy seeing the finish because I think it turned out beautifully. I know I sound like a broken record here, but oh, those colors. I don't even like orange and I can't resist a little pile of pumpkins. I think it's great. So. One last look at Seasons of the Heart before we move on to my next finish, which is Plum Street Sampler's Thistle House. And this was my first stitch on Irish Coffee, which I cannot get enough of. So I had a pretty sizable chunk to start with here, and then I went out and bought another yard. My new favorite one and what can I say and fully justified by the results because this is my finished stitch of thistle house and check out those thistle heads are those great or what so that's swallow all and cut turkey stitch the color is 741 
which as a cabinet of curiosity student who's a commenter here tim pointed out that this is a screamer of a color that doesn't always play well with others and he's right about that like no argument there but the kind of brown tones in this linen toned it down a little bit and it just pops it looks beautiful and i absolutely love it i had to make quite a lot of changes to the chart to bring the thistles all the way down and replace the woman here but i think it was worth the effort i love it one interesting thing about it was that without the pink a lot of the colors were very brown toned and so progress was kind of interesting it was looking pretty dull until started in the pink and then it just came alive look at those they're so fun i can't get enough so these are my threads and i will be posting the conversion in the description below the linen is irish coffee the backing is the lovely silk i found at brightex and then I stuffed with wool roving and I did my hard pressing from the back to flatten it out because that means you see more of the design. I like to have close margins, but if you've got a really fluffy round pillow, then more of the design rolls out at the edges and you don't really see it. Whereas here, I think you get a pretty good look at the thistles. So that's Thistle House. I mean, those ridiculous fluffy thistle heads, I think really just make the piece. and. I had a lot of fun with this. It actually pairs beautifully in a display with Seasons of the Heart Spring, even though they're tonally quite different. So you'll see me putting those together in displays. And then, though, so Seasons of the Heart Fall and Thistle House are my finishes for this episode. And then we will move on to Hall. No, actually, wait, before we move on to Hall, I have one more point about Irish coffee and the way colors pop on it. So I had previously shown you my finish of Christmas tea, which was done on Fuller's Teasel because at that point, Irish coffee wasn't available. And when it was, I had mentioned that I really wished it had been that I could stitch this conversion on Irish coffee. Well, Someone here did. Nancy Drake stitched my silk conversion of Irish of, of Christmas tea on Irish coffee and gave me permission to share her photos with you. Check this out. Do the colors pop on it or what? And she did note that her finish hasn't yet been blocked. Points to you, Nancy, for knowing that it needs to be. It's gonna look beautiful once you get it finished. Her handle here is Nancy's Needlework and her name is Nancy Drake. So this is her work and I hope you enjoy seeing it because, oh, does that look amazing or what? I absolutely love how the conversion just comes alive on the more richly colored ground. I have been doing a little other stitching on Irish coffee and I can confirm that colors do really pop on this very richly colored ground. Although I can't show those to you yet because I am planning some incredibly exciting things for the holidays. I've been stitching ahead so I can get all the kits ready, the materials ordered. I've been kidding like a mad woman around here. So there's gonna be a holiday bonanza, get ready. I also will be having a return of my special guest for a Christmas episode. As my mom mentioned, we really love Christmas and her decorations just put mine to shame. You can't even see her tree under all the ornaments. So she'll be back for a special episode during the holidays and we'll share her tree and some of her holiday finishes over the years. So I hope you'll really enjoy that. I know we'll have a great time doing it. So that's just a preview of some fun stuff that's coming. But now we will get to linen. So my haul starts with new linen colors. And these are only going to be new to you if you weren't at summer school because these premiered at the attic as a special for summer school. So you'll have seen these if you were at summer school, lucky you. But mine's just in and I am so thrilled to share them with you because, oh, these colors make my heart sing. So these are the latest from Legacy Linen. 
And the first is Thai iced tea, 45 count, which is basically the higher count version of Irish coffee. I know Jean is gonna make hay with this one and I'm definitely gonna be stitching some ornaments on this myself as well, Sophie, which is what I really like for 45 count. So that's gorgeous. Mm, gonna be great. And then there is an actual new color as well. And this, oh, oh, makes my heart sing. Makes me want to just throw everything I had planned out the window and start all of the things on this. So this is the same color in two counts. We have 38 count Himalayan Fog and 45 count Hazy Summit. And this is a light gray with kind of slightly brown beige undertones. So there were already light grays in the Legacy Linen range, but they tended to be more blue toned. And my personal preference on gray is this. So I saw this and just, ooh, started drooling because this is gorgeous. So what already existed was Heron Gray, which definitely more blue toned, and then Cloud Burst, which when you hold it up next to Himalayan Fog, you can really see the difference there. These are both a more, little more rich in color than they're showing here. There's so much natural light that they're really quite blowing out, but you'll recognize Cloud Burst if you've been a viewer for a while because that's what I stitched Peppermint and Holly on. And it was perfect for Peppermint and Ollie. I absolutely love it. I think it was the exact right linen color for this particular stitch, but oh, am I thrilled to have this going forward. Himalayan Fog, my new one true linen love. And it also complements another one of the newer colors from Legacy Linen, Cloister Cream, which you've seen here before. So having a little more in the brown tone grays is just ooh, fabulous expansion to the range if you ask me. So I cannot wait to get started. <laughs> I mean, St. Louis September is almost here. I have bitten off more than I can chew already. So I think I'm gonna have to content myself with just going through charts and picking things out to stitch on heavily in fog. But you know, I am just dying to cut into this and stitch all of the things. We'll see how long I can stay disciplined, probably about three days. So that's the new linen, which, mm, the attic definitely has theirs in. I know Needle and a Stack has ordered. I'm not sure if they've received their order, but um, call your local Needlework store, because, ooh, beautiful. So the other bit of haul I have is from Jackie DuPlessis. So if you don't know Jackie, she is a needlework teacher. I had the pleasure of meeting her earlier this year and oh, she's a delightful, delightful person. I love her. But she also has been making the coolest needlework accessories. These are carved and engraved mother of Pearl, which I just love. So these are some thread winders I got from Jackie. I'm gonna need something to really show you the detail on these. So this one, and I'm afraid that a lot of the carving isn't gonna show up because they just reflect so much light, but you can see how detailed the cutout work is on that. So this is a thread winder with a ship. And I don't know if this is gonna pick up, but there's a little Union Jack engraved on the flag flying from the ship. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then this one is more of like a love trophy. So hearts and arrows. Beautiful. And then this one has a planar outline, but really detailed engraving. Yeah, I think you can just see that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. And then in addition to the thread winders, I got some spool holders because, well, why not? So these you unscrew and then rescrew around a standard large spool. And they are like dimensional carved flowers. Dropping things. It's not one of my floss tubes until I drop something. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? They're just, oh, needlework pretty pretties. They don't really serve a purpose except to make me smile. So Jackie doesn't really have a website or much of an online presence, but I asked her and she 
gave me her email and if you would like any mother of pearl fabulousness from Jackie, shoot her an email and she will hook you up. She has considerably more in stock than what I've shown you here and I'm sure I will be buying more of it myself because I love mother of pearl. One of the things we bonded over when I met her was before she even told me she was doing this, I was telling her about my Marie Antoinette sewing box. So these are actually accessories to go in my Marie Antoinette sewing box. And that I had a little collection of antique mother of pearl gaming chips, which are used in the film. That was what um, gave me the idea to go looking for these in the first place. So these are a couple from my collection. They're really fine paper thin and then they have these really beautiful carvings on them and then Jackie so I told her that Jackie got all excited and started showing me her modern mother of pearl creations which are just beautiful 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 like oh fabulous but if you'd like an antique one the third prize for the finish of the Simple Harmony box is still available and that includes an antique mother of pearl thread winder as well as the bone needlework tools. I hope we'll be seeing a third finish soon. There has been, people have been posting to the hashtag, hashtag Simple Harmony SAL and speaking of the box, I keep forgetting to tell you about my new favorite floss tubers. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. So they're called the Curious Crafters. I will link their floss tube in the description. They're not that new. They have several episodes. I just keep forgetting to mention it because unless it's a physical object that I can touch to remember to talk about it, I always forget. I have a printed outline and I don't say half the stuff on it. I'm terrible. But the Curious Crafters are a pair of sisters. They're both teachers. They live here in the Bay Area. I love the sister dynamic. They knit, they craft, they sew, they stitch. They're really fun. And they actually did a special episode a little bit back. I'll link that as well. They had a Bay Area fiber adventure. They went to Olivia B's sister's bakery, which looked amazing, really delicious treats. Then they went on to Snad to see my basket at the exhibition there. And then they went on to Needle in the Haystack to see the Simple Harmony box. It is still there, by the way, if you're in the Bay Area and haven't been out to see it yet. And do some shopping because you know you can't go to Needle in a Haystack without some serious haul. So check them out. I'm sure you'll enjoy them as much as I do. They're really charming and delightful. So, okay, so quick little bit on my new start, mostly because there's not very much here to show you, but I am really excited about it. So I'm gonna share that with you and then we'll move on to giveaway winners and sampler September. So stick with me here. Two episodes ago, I showed you my completed beaded basket based off the Corning Museum historic example. This is actually quite small, even though it's a fairly sizable piece. It measures about 12 inches across at its widest point. It's about three and a quarter inches high. So it's got some size to it, but it's not nearly as big as the big historic ones, which measure about 20 by 30. And in that episode, I linked to some of my favorite historic beaded baskets. And as I was writing that description and looking them up and looking at the photos, it's just, oh, getting all hepped up about the big ones because ever since I started collecting beads, which was about nine years ago, I have wanted to do the big one. And that's what I started. So this doesn't look like anything because it isn't anything. It's some scribbled notes around the edges about what the flowers are gonna be for the sides of my gigantic basket. I coined this as start. <laughs> it's actually an egregious violation of the truth. Really, I just like played with beads a little bit. So I had a look at some of the favorite beads in my collection that I didn't get to use on my finished basket. Some of the favorite things from historic baskets that I was inspired by that I didn't get to and I decided to just 
start making them and see where it takes me. I expect to finish in about 2030. You won't be hearing about this regularly on Floss too, because, oh my gosh, this is gonna take forever and a day. But these are some beautiful blue flowers inspired by a motif on the MFA Boston basket. And so here I'm using some brighter colors, some cut beads. These have, the leaves are sparkly and luscious. And these are some blue beads from my stash. I have all these beautiful blues that just weren't a color fit with this basket. They would have been way too bright because this one is really marked by pale colors, a lot of transparent beads to keep it really light and pale. And I had all these gorgeous, gorgeous blues that just didn't fit on that basket that I knew I wanted to use eventually. So, you know, seize the day. I'm going to start using them. Started with the blues, decided to work outwards. A few of you asked how I store my beads. So my antiques are all bottled, labeled, and then kept in clear boxes sorted by color. Although right now a lot of them are sitting out on my work table and I'm just playing with them. So this is actually most of a motif. There will need to be more leaves and the like. Oh, now it's all falling apart. So that will form. <laughs> this all to stay together. So that will form part of a piece of the side of the basket. And then I got to one of my favorite, favorite, favorite motifs. I have been waiting to make this for nine years, ever since I saw, um, this is a close up from Basket in the Fitzwilliam Museum. I'll link it in the description below. It's got dimensional pea pods. That's what I made. Look at those. Then I made like little curling tendrils. It's just being strung on wire, but oh, oh, I've been waiting forever to make those. And then I can't really hold this up because it's, just, it's a pile of leaves and flowers. And I'm using lots of cut beads. This basket is going to have lots and lots of sparkle. It's just going to be a hodgepodge of all the beads and motifs and fun stuff I haven't done yet. It's, it's like Katie's bucket list basket. So oh, I've been playing with beads. I, I don't know what I was thinking. No, I know. I wasn't thinking is what I was thinking. I was just playing and enjoying and having fun. But that's my start. We'll probably be checking back in with that in maybe two years when I have some progress to show you. But oh, the enchantment of beads, it is real. So moving on from that, we will finish up today with Sampler September and giveaways. So Sampler September starts this week and I have picked Plum Street Samplers, My Early Days, which Brenda, Brenda and Laura showed on their floss tube a while back and I went and shoomed the chart from the attic because, oh, I love those floral motifs. I love the flowers, I love the colors. I'm not sure I love all that block stitching on the grass. No, I definitely don't love that. I don't enjoy block stitching. But the colors, the floral motifs, the really graceful greenery there, that I was into. And I decided that this was going to be my sampler September pick. And because I want it to be a sampler pillow, I'm really into sampler pillows, that meant going for a very small size. <laughs> we'll see how this works. I may have bitten off more than I can chew or, you know, see. But uh, 5363 Legacy Linen Sicilian Marzipan is what I've got for this. It's different from what the model is used, but I think it's going to be great with the colors. Uh, Sicilian Marzipan has had a dye lot change since I bought this. This is an old piece from Stash. Right now it's more of a subtle off-white. It bears a very strong resemblance to Russian tea cake, just higher count. And then these are the threads. This is not really a complete conversion at the moment. There are so many of them, they're falling out of the box. But 
So I will narrow this down and I've been asked if I will share the conversion for Sampler September. The answer to that is yes, once it actually is a conversion because that's definitely more threads than I need. I just have pulled a bunch of things and then I will make my choices once I actually start stitching the elements that they're called for. So I will be releasing the conversion, but stay tuned on that because I haven't started stitching. I don't even know what I think about the yellows yet. One conversion I will definitely be releasing, however, is Live On Little, also by Plum Street. Lots of Plum Street in my life lately. So I showed this to you a few episodes ago and suggested Cloister Cream as a possible ground. I also showed you some really luscious silks. That was mean because I didn't have a conversion. I wasn't intending on producing a complete conversion unless I stitched it. But so many of you asked about it that I have decided that I will work the complete conversion and I will be giving that out next episode as my gift to you to celebrate Sampler September, to thank you for supporting my channel, and also because selfishly, I hope some of you will stitch it and share photos so I can live vicariously through you because truly, I'm not sure I could survive all of the block stitching on this. That is, oh. Oh, that is serious. This thing is practically all full coverage. But I love it. And I love the silks that I think you could use with this. So I am working on the conversion now. I'm about halfway done. I need to spend some more time with the chart and with the colors to finish it off. But look for that. Next episode, Live on Little, if you're interested in that for your sampler September pick. So I will be sharing the conversion as my gift to you. And I hope some of you will make very good use of it because, ooh, it's gonna be good. I really hope you do stitch it and that you share photos because I hate block stitching, so I'm not sure I ever will do it, but I'm pretty sure I've said that three times now, so time to move on. Giveaways. So the giveaway winner from the last episode, this is the Floss Tube Anniversary Fob of some beaded blue sparkly lusciousness, and the winner is Maria W. I have commented on your comment. Please contact me with your mailing address, and I will get this out to you. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And then today's giveaways are courtesy of Jersey Girl Stitch Company. So if you're like me and you weren't at summer school and you're very bummed about that fact, this is how you can get your little piece of summer school because similar counting pins were part of the swag at the attic last weekend, which I know because I've been binge watching all of the recaps and living vicariously through you all. So these are three sets of counting pins and some lovely fall and I think this is really Christmas colors from Jersey Coast, Jersey Girl Stitch Company. I will put their information in the description below. Teresa has been a longtime commenter and it's just such a lovely person. So I hope you'll check them out and support them. And then our three giveaways for today. So the first is Falling Foliage and the keyword for this will be Foliage. And then the second set of fall pins is Harvest Thanks, and the keyword is harvest. And then the third, which really says Christmas to me, the like silver and crystal and the red. Looks like it's perfect for this one, right? This is red motifs. Sorry for the glare, there's a lot of light in here today. And the keyword for this will be red. So the three keywords to enter, use them in your comment. They are harvest, foliage, and red. Good luck, I look forward to reading your entries and thank you, Teresa and Jersey Girl Stitch Co. Those are beautiful. So for the next time, Sampler September, I'm excited. Are you excited? Stay tuned to see whether or not I have cried trying to stitch on 5363. Fingers crossed I can manage it. 
I will also have a big finish that I am excited to share with you and I have the giveaway winners for the three sets of counting pins I just shared as well as a first look at a very exciting announcement that is coming at the end of September. One final reminder that the kits for Seasons of the Heart Ball are available currently on my website. Pre-orders will be open for two weeks, just this once, because it's a busy time for everybody right now and I do recognize that. So last look at fall, beautiful colors. I know I sound like a broken record, but I really do love these. So with that, I'll leave you until next time. Oh, and I hope to see you for some really fun stitchy chats, some sampler September fabulousness. And until then, happy stitching.